Oh, it's already being recorded. Great. So, hi, Alfred. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. It's uh, a bit dark outside. I, I understand that it's uh, morning for most of you. Yes. Well, not for me. I'm also in Europe, and I can tell you it's uh, it's going to get dark pretty damn quickly. No, um, okay. So, thank you so much for your talk. Uh, I didn't get to ask you the question before I joined, but do you have access to the pads and the questions? Um, I do have access to it. I'll just uh, open it up. Open it up. Uh, uh, I'm not sure Sasha had given it to me. No. Could you post Sorry, what was the question? Uh, could you post the link uh, to I it can the, give you a link on the You can press. I am putting it in the BBB chat, so it should appear on the left. But in the meantime, okay. if you want, I can just ask you the question. And you can maybe, whilst you do the little thing to open the pad, we can. Uh, you can actually start answering one of the questions. Um, okay. Do you mind if I read you one? Yeah, go ahead. Sure. So the first question that we had was, it'd be interesting if you explain why WeChat is a necessity for you. Outside China, most people have no reason to use it at all. So can you actually develop on this? Yeah, so um, my utility for WeChat is basically, um, I've got to have calls every every morning. So my manager uh, has, has to use the tool. He's not a huge fan of it either. Um, but it's like company policy and there's plenty of sharing that has to go through that. Um, so it's kind of all, uh, since it's the tool that's used by most, uh, most, um, most companies in China, um, it's kind of a tool that you have to work around. And now most people know this, um, WeChat is a privacy nightmare. Um, and I, as I touched, as I touched on uh, during my talk, it's also just a nightmare in general to, to work around. So, um, it's it's interesting to try and find ways to to work around it or to to minimize its impact on my life as much as possible. Um, so strictly speaking, I don't need to use it. Obviously, functions functions uh, that can be that that it that it has can be um, used by by other software. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, most of it. Okay, great. Also, I'm really sorry. Apparently, my audio seems to be crackling a little bit. I will address this as soon as we're finished with this talk, but there isn't all that much I can do right now. So sorry, people, you'll have to deal with it for a little while. Um, okay, so next question. There's a question that is actually dear to my heart. Have you looked at CRDT.el for collaborative real-time editing? Do you actually know what it is? Uh, I hadn't looked at it, no. Um, for me, Collaborative is less less uh, important because most of my work is just like um, versions. So I, I have a version of a script that I send off to my editor, um, and we we don't work on it together. Um, so that's that's kind of been less less of a um, less of an important part for for my workflow. Um, but it is interesting. I'll I'll have to take a look at it. Um, it used to be. A bigger part of my workflow um, when I was well, when I was a student, and so definitely interesting to, to look into. But unfortunately, I don't have much to say about it. Okay, but you, you're fine. The reason, so I hope I'm not too much now. Uh, Alfred, can you tell me? Are you am I cutting off a lot when I'm talking? Yeah, it's pretty bad. I, I thought it was my internet connection, <laughs> but uh, it's it's uh, it's not great. <laughs> oh, it's me. You know what? Uh, what we'll do for the moment is that we'll stick to the audio simply, okay? And you should be, can you still hear me right now? Yeah, I can hear you a little bit better. Um, okay, sure. I'll put on my webcam like this. You know what? We just care about you, so you'll have to be so, solid on the scene. Uh, the reason I was asking you about uh, CRDT, is it better now? Can you just confirm the audio is better? Yeah, the audio is much better. Oh, cool. Thank you. I'm, I'm so happy to hear this. Um, so the reason we're mentioning CRDT is that it's actually pretty great. It's um, it's uh, like a lot of people think about collaborative editing, and then they t they tend to think about you know Google Doc or any kind of proprietary solution. But CRDT is kind of kind of broaching the gap to what you can do with multiple people using Emacs. Now uh, I'm talking about this because I've worked with uh, Shantan Hong who is the maintainer of CRDT, and we've worked a little bit on it. And there are still infuriating problems with it, especially uh, making it secure and uh, all this uh, jazzy nonsense. But yeah, I do recommend looking into it because it would make it much easier to work with other people. All right, now that I am yeah. not lagging anymore, uh, do you have the pad in front of you? 
I do. Do you want me to, to answer questions directly, or do you? Do you do yes, you that might be best, um, so that I can. Okay. Yes, I, I kind of like to work with the little help yeah, in the background yeah, to make sure that I can. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll leave you to it. So I'll answer the, the question about Ogmode org files and sharing, uh, which I've encountered. Um, so I've, I've kind of had a, a whole issue uh, starting out with, well, I've started working with Ogmode files, and uh, now I've got to figure out what do I do with them. So my first instinct was I'll just uh, share the Ogmode file directly, um, which as um, as some people might have figured out um, if they've tried, is not very successful with uh, with normal people. Um, I've also tried exporting it to DocX or to ODT, but that's problematic because you have well plenty of standards in ODT which don't transfer well. So for example, by default, um, the ODT um, kind of adopts, uh, what's it called, a latex-like structure. So it's like 1.1.1, 1 .1 .1, um, which isn't optimal for writing and sharing documents, at least in the way that I write them. Um, so the what I've settled for is, for now, just not sharing the org directly. Um, I wanted to, to be able to do that through, through Git, Git, GitHub or GitLab, but um, it's a bit too much of a hassle to ask people to, to create an account there. Um, and I've just created some export profiles uh, for my ODT documents, uh, which sorts out that problem. Um, and allows me to, to just share that through that and uh, kind of bypass org mode files for, for now. So unfortunately, yeah, I, I kind of am not able to stay 100% org. My plan on the long term is to have it go up on a, on a website, so kind of make a, a work wiki, uh, which will allow me to, to link back to some uh, research documents uh, in the script. Um, so that's, that's the long term plan. But um, and that'll allow, that'll be built with uh, with org mode documents, so with uh, OX Hugo and all that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that's that's most of it. Uh, pan doc for incoming and out, outgoing docs, repeating versions. Um, so I do use pan doc for outgoing docs, uh, as I just said. Um, I found some issues with, with uh, document quality. So as I'd said, like uh, layouts are kind of wonky, uh, but that's that's possible to work through. Um, if you if you go well, if you go into the settings and, and adjust basically to how to how um, you want it to, to look like. Um, and for incoming docs, so that's a bit more of a hassle. My plan for this talk was to have it a bit more ready, but I've got this um, Integration for org org IC org um, the um, Apple Pages documents that kind of thing, um, so that's often the documents that I get from my colleagues, and I found a way to to transfer transfer them um, into into org documents. Uh, I did that kind of quickly, so I, I don't think I'm quite ready to share exactly how it went, but I, I'm planning on, on uh, doing some documentation around that. Um, but yeah, basically the gist of it is uh, I don't find it a huge issue. Uh, I do use other tools um, other than just Pandoc to kind of complement that, because otherwise, yes, I wouldn't be able to, I wouldn't be able to, to, use, um, to, use, to use that for incoming and outgoing talks, and I'd have to copy and paste stuff. Yes. Oh, so, so, sorry, I misspressed my talking to production button. So don't mind me. Oh, no worries. Um, beginning on Emacs again. Welcome. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's the issue I've got as well. <laughs> Oops, take your time. So, Alfred, what what we're probably going to do soon is that, uh, as we've probably told you in the opening remarks, uh, we will be. Uh, letting people in. So right now we are in a room with Alfred on BBB, Big Blue Button, and we have now opened the the, the session so that people can join and ask uh, questions with their voice rather than having to type them out. And we have about 10 more minutes until we need to move on to the next talk. So normally if you go to the talks page or all the areas that Sasha pointed out earlier, you should be able to find the link to the room and join us to ask questions directly to Alfred. And Alfred, in the meantime, if you, I don't think we have any more questions for now. 
you have the questions uh, about beginning on Emacs that has now finished, if you want to take this one in the meantime. Yeah. And so the, the comments and all that, I'll, I'll uh, go through the notes again once, once I've got a bit more time. It's been a bit of a hectic day. Um, and and uh, put, put some, some more references in. <clears throat> so what was your moment when you started to work in Emacs instead of co config editing? Interesting. Um, so basically, uh, as I hinted at in my talk, <clears throat> I, I did spend a lot of time this summer just editing my configs. And I, I kind of had the, the, the click, the moment where, oh, I, I really need to stop doing just that. Um, after I had, um, after I had um, editing, well, text editing workflow that I was happy with. Uh, so I, I think it's, possible to, to just jump into do Emacs without editing the config at all. Um, that's, that's not the way that I work. Um, but I think that, yeah, being, being able to, to um, not be too frustrated in like figuring out how to take notes, like the space NNT in do Emacs, just, uh, creating an, an org, um, org capture template or using an org capture template and realizing, all right, I can just any config idea that I have, um, I can, I can, uh, put off to later and continue focusing on this work that I have right in front of me. I think that was, that was kind of a moment where I realized, all right, I don't need to edit the, this config all day. And I, I like to edit my config for like a whole month, but obviously that's not quite, that's not quite uh, feasible. I mean, working on a month on your config, you know, some of us have been working on our config for the better part of the last 30 years or 10 years or 20 years, depending on your age. So do not worry. You will find the time to work <laughs> on your config. It is, Emacs is just about editing your config. So before you continue, I just want to let people know. So we have opened up the question and answer room. Uh, and now people can join and ask questions. But I see for now, we mostly have people wanting to listen in. But that's also because as soon as we'll need to move the stream to the next talk, you'll still be able to join the BBB room and it will still be open. So that if you want to ask questions to Alfred off stream, uh, be careful, it will still be recorded and still be posted on the website afterwards. Well, you can do so. And as long as Alfred is available, he can answer your questions. And otherwise, if you don't want to join, you can still type your questions in a pad. And I'm sure we'll find the time, um, maybe after Christmas or whenever we are all a little more available to answer all the questions that we have. All right. Uh, so sorry, Alfred, you can go now again. OK. Um, so yeah, I've seen, I've seen uh, the, the latest question from Vidianos. Uh, so why is Emacs recommended for journalism? It's actually um, an interesting question because that's that's what I had asked myself when I just started. Um, I wouldn't say it's recommended. Um, obviously, it's it's like just as Emacs isn't recommended to anyone in particular because you have you have to really figure out, oh, this is for me. Um, but I think it's it's a uh, yeah. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. Is my button not working again? I, I will, <laughs> I will chastise myself. No worries. Um, so I think it's. Um, so I gotta get back into it. Um, it's valuable for journalism in the sense that there are plenty of tools that are used for scientific research, um, which are also used for journalism research. And in the sense that Emacs is kind of tailored through BibTeX, through BibLaTeX, through like OrgRome and OrgRome Noter, that kind of thing. Um, it's it's uh, very easy to transfer these skills into journalism, and because you're just researching topics, um, you're transcribing interviews, you're like going through data and trying to figure out, all right, this is the part that's that's valuable. This is like something that I'm going to research. And for for me, OrgRome is kind of a game changer because it allows me to to just set my set my thoughts aside um just create a create a roam link and know that i'm gonna i'm gonna get back to it um so i think it's recommended in that sense because otherwise I'd, I'd just be writing in a in a google drive document and just be spending all my days um working on stuff that's not exactly related um but obviously for for people who have a bit more self-control than i do um it's probably a bit a bit easier and less less necessary but it's so good to hear this sorry for the interruption but it's so good to hear that orgrom actually manages to uh people manage to use orgrom to you know 
give some more life to their notes. It's just not a scribbled uh, notes in one of your book that you never open again. It's uh, <laughs> the fact that it's just a file and that you can link it very easily to the rest of your files. It makes it really easily accessible to not forget about it and to try to refine it later on into something more valuable, be it an article, be it a research paper or stuff like this. So yeah, I'm very pleased to hear that Orgrim is being put to uh, such use. And we'll hear plenty more about Orgrim and Zellcaster as usual, ever since there was the boom in 2020 about Orgrim stuff and Zellcaster stuff. So don't worry about it. And if you're tired about it, well, sorry, you can go watch Dev or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think that when I realized how to use Orgrim was also kind of a moment that made me want to stay to stay there. Like um, I, I had shown it on the on the talk, uh, but my um, my um, documentary ideas page is basically just like chock full of ideas of stuff that I have thought about for five minutes and just stuff there and know that I can I can create like stumble on the link at some point and, and work on it. So it's uh, yeah, it's very valuable. I, I think it's something that we like even outside of Emacs, we, we should uh, probably be a bit more conscious of, of using these kinds of tools and pr promoting promoting that kind of um, association and kind of linking uh, even outside of the of, uh, of, uh, confines of Orgrim or as much as, as there are confi confines, I suppose. Uh, well, I think people are already complaining that there's too much Orgrim being talked about. So before we start, <laughs> well, going outside of Emacs, you know, there are plenty of tools as well outside of Emacs, tools which are also floss, which allow you to have similar workflows. But I believe really that uh, tools within Emacs are within the entire stack of Emacs with the philosophy of Emacs that allows so much different modes to be developed on top of it, which is amazing. Uh, before we continue, I kind of want to check the clock because we will need to get started on the next talk eventually. We do have a lot of people mm -hmm. joining on BBB, and thank you. Hi, everyone. You're probably hearing me twice, once in BBB and once on the stream. So don't forget to pause the stream if you are uh, hearing my voice in doubles. Uh, we will need to move at 45, so in five minutes, to the next talk. And until then, uh, until then, that is very French of me to say then and not then, uh, we can uh, take a couple more questions then, Alfred, if you want. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, open open the questions or to, to people joining on joining in on the mic. Uh, and if if there's nothing, I'm uh, I'm happy to to chat around or to to wait. <laughs> sure. Uh, do we have any other questions on the pad? I think you've uh, you've been pretty thorough, and thank you so much for taking the time to answer this. Um, one of the reason that we wanted to have two tracks this year is to be able to spend a little more time with speakers because it was really heart wrenching last year. You know, to have so many talks going one after the other, we barely had the time to talk. And this year, it's a more of a leisurely paced stream and yeah it feels like i can take my time i'm not running constantly out of breath you know it's still the beginning okay i, st I still was extremely stressed whenever we need to press <laughs> the start stream button you know all st all kinds of fire starts spawning left and right but uh if we don't have any more questions well maybe we can just uh go on a little break and we can reconvene, reconvene in four minutes uh, because i don't see people on bbb having their mic open so Alfred, you're more than welcome to stay in the room. Uh, what we are probably going to do now is go on a little bit of a break. So we're going to try to put something on the screen. But uh, there's, if you... There's just been a question for, from Corwin. So is uh, are you closing out the room or...? Oh, no, no, no. We probably... Will... Well, OK, let me just read Corwin's question. Uh, yes, you do have a question for Corwin, but we're not going to close the room. We're going to leave it open as long as you want to stay. You, you can stay five to ten minutes. Maybe people might show up. But otherwise, um, yeah, so just reading Corwin's questions because um, it's not in a pad yet, I think. So do you use any fancy solutions for annotations t annotating text onto particularly video timestamps? Um, well, I don't use it yet, uh, but it's, it's uh, planned. <laughs> So I've I've uh, started a Reddit thread and uh, Sasha has been has been helpful with uh, with answering that one, um, but my my plan is to work with with um, with subtitle editing at some point, um, and to introduce. Wait, annotate. I I might have misunderstood the question. 
Oh, sorry. Uh, I'm looking for the question as well. So don't worry if you're lost. I'm also lost. <laughs> Talked about the question. Annotation text. Um, if it's possible to get a clarification for what you mean by annotation text, is that like uh, text effects or is that um, subtitles? Uh... I think it was mostly about, uh, you were talking about note taking. I think annotation in that sense on the videos would be you have a video and Ooh. you're trying to take note on this video. Like either you have the timestamp on the side or you uh, overlay something, but I think it's mostly about taking notes on videos. Okay. Yeah, so for, for now, I'm creating a new link um, between between uh, every video or podcast that I listen to, but I but I remember to do so, uh, and creating just an orgrom an orgrom um, document for for every for every um, for every new episode or every new video. Uh, but I'm I am definitely gonna have to take some time and, and figure out a process in which I can like link together. RSS feeds or um, L feed as well um, to to be able to annotate that and link it up with my other bit text notes. So nothing fancy yet, but that is planned. So stick around till next year, and uh, I might have something for you. <laughs> and we will love to have you back. Yeah, it's uh, thanks thanks so much for organizing this. It's uh, it's it's great to yeah, to have to have these questions. Yeah, well, thank you so much, Alfred. It was, you know, you had nothing to do with it, but you were the f first speaker to come. And even though, you know, having a pre-reg makes it that much less stressful, you know, to be facing the crowd, you still had to take the first questions from the crowd. And thank you so much because you did it brilliantly and you answered so many questions considering. So, uh, Alfred, you're going to probably stay in a room a little while. I don't see a lot of people joining quite yet. I don't think people are current. I think most of the questions have already been addressed on the pad, but you can stick around in two minutes and we'll be with you shortly to help you close the room. But uh, right. right now, what we're going to do is we're going to take well, we're not going to take any break. We're just going to move straight into the next talk. Uh, do bear with us because it's a, it's a fine machinery. And if something flashes on the screen, bear with us. It will be live pretty soon. OK, it's apparently live. Bye-bye. Take care. OK. OK, uh, so we are now off the stream. We are playing the next pre-rec. Thank you so much, Alfred. And sorry for the intermittent microphone uh, tuning in. It was basically my push to talk button with production that is misbehaving a little bit. It's working so well that I'm actually, if I keep talking whilst I'm releasing the button, I'm talking to you, which is really weird and really confusing. OK. <laughs> yeah, no, it's always, uh, it's always rough with, uh, with audio, new audio setups um, going live with them at the same time as you're discovering them. It's always an interesting. Oh, yes. Interesting. Especially <laughs> since it's only one aspect of the stuff we're doing. You know, we're doing so much stuff on the side as well. Okay, I'm gonna have to get going. Uh, I don't see mo I don't see any people joining on BBB, so you can stick around a little while. Uh, Colin might be back in about two to three minutes to help you close the room, but otherwise you can just leave if no one shows up in two minutes. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. And uh, yes, thank uh, you so much. <laughs> yes. Okay. Merci, okay. and uh, see you next time. Take care. All right, guys. Um, if you have any questions, this is the last, the last, um, last moment to, to launch launch a question. If if you if you don't want to be recorded, I'm happy to I'm happy to take a question uh, off off air or something. I don't know. I don't know if a chat. Oops. Oh, Max. Yes. When I get stuck with an Emacs problem. Uh, For non-tech people, do you, do you mean non non-technical minded? Like uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, oh, right. Well, typically, typically, uh, I try and just research on on uh, on Stack Overflow or, or other like platforms where where you can share code and share problems. Um, but I I typically don't go into too much like non-tech places for Emacs problems. I, I have other problems. So for example, research problems and that kind of thing. 
Um, I, I'm not sure I answered the, the core of your question. Um, the, the, oh, all right. Cheers. Yeah, no, I mean, I I do I do have other other communities that I join and but I try to talk talk about these issues with that aren't that aren't Emacs. Um, but obviously, it's it's difficult to to talk about uh, Emacs problems with non Emacs users. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's that's uh, the whole the whole issue with it being so complicated to to get started is that. Well, you can you can say you can say all you want about how great it is, but people people aren't always uh, keen to to spend three months of their life uh, trying to learn it. Which fair enough. All right. Well, I hope I answered uh, I answered your questions to the to as much as I could. I'll I'll get back to the um, to the note document um, at some point in the coming week. Um, putting in some some more notes about uh, about the stuff you guys were interested in, and yeah, well, thanks for thanks for asking questions. Thanks for being here, and uh, hopefully hopefully see you next time in the in the Emacs Conf. You are currently the only person in this conference.